If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you've got If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out by the same old fight. We've all run to things we know that just ain't right. Well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need Amen. He's such a powerful God, and he can break any obstacle that you face. He can break any chain. Well, good morning. We're so glad that we are together this morning to worship the Lord together. Um, I want you guys to just greet one another. Maybe say to your neighbor, hi, how are you doing? Truly ask them that, and introduce yourself. <laughs>
beginning our new series entitled Transformed, and I believe that we cannot transform, we can't get to that place until we make the choice and say, I'm going to make room for you to actually do what you want to do in my life, right? We can try, 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 but if we don't have that open heart, the open mind to let God truly transform us and move in our lives, we'll just keep hitting that same wall. So this morning, this song that we're going to sing together as we prepare for our message today is we're asking God, or we're telling God actually, that we're going to make room for Him. Would you do that with me this morning from your hearts and in your mind? Tell the Lord... I'm going to make room for you, for you to do whatever you want to do. As we sing this song together, my prayer, my hope is that we all will do just that, surrender to him. As we draw closer and closer to him. And let's sing this together. Here is where I lay it down, every burden. This is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt, this is my surrender. Is 
have a million things on our minds and on our hearts and what's next? Oh, what did I do yesterday? I just can't believe I did that, God. Whatever it is that we've brought in here, God, we surrender it to you. And we're going to make room for you starting right now for you to do whatever you want to in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds to transform us, to, to draw us near to you that we would live it out. Lord, I do pray that you continue to shake up our lives, our the, what we think that we are living. God, continue to shake it because we need to continually serve you and surrender to you and get out of these habits, get out of old ways that maybe are just a stronghold, keeping us from, from growing closer to you to being who you want us to be, God. Lord, just continue to prepare our hearts, open our minds this morning to what you want us to hear. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that we get to just gather together and worship and to grow together. It's your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Bill, we're starting this whole sermon series on transformed. And today we're going to talk about transformed uh, and being spiritually healthy. So when you think about being transformed and what it means to be spiritually healthy, what does that mean to you? That means Jesus loves me. And Jesus loves you. Do you know that those three words is the whole gospel from Genesis to, to the end of Revelation? Not only that, those three words, when I greet anybody with Jesus loves you, that's the greatest compliment you can give anyone. Because Colossians tells us that all things were made by Jesus Christ. All things in heaven, all things on earth, all things visible, all things invisible. And that he is ruler over all things, all nations, all people, all kings, all rulers. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And in him all things hold together. The universe, the earth, your marriage. And the church grows only as he causes it to grow. So when you say Jesus loves you, you are the greatest compliment because he is king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. Those were three seeds that fell on hopefully good soil. When you say Jesus loves you, you are a sower of seeds. When they fall on good soil, the Holy Spirit creates a crop that yields a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. Wow. Not only are you spreading the gospel, but you're sowing the seed and you're giving the greatest compliment to someone you could ever give. Jesus loves you. Let's give it up for Bill Bissey. Isn't that awesome? So uh, we want to thank everybody that's here today, all of our visitors that are here today, we want to thank you, all of our online friends. It's just awesome that you're still checking this place out. So we're just glad you're all here and hope you just have a wonderful day as we continue to worship the Lord. So this will be the last time I'm going to plug this, uh, but uh, we've been talking about these transformed journals and it goes right along with this sermon series. It'll be seven weeks, but here's why I love the journal is it's a, it's a place where you can take your sermon notes. It's a place where you can come on a Wednesday night, or you can also go online. It's all on YouTube, and you can take uh, the class that goes with that. It's excellent. Uh, you can also get in this thing, and it's got daily devotions for the next seven weeks. So it's just an outstanding resource, and uh, you can pick those up in the back, and uh, they'll answer all the questions for you. The other thing, when you go into a new year, <clears throat> I love sometimes to reflect back and to kind of see where I'm at spiritually. And so uh, Saddleback Ministries has put together, they call this a personal spiritual assessment tool. It's got some outstanding questions. Those are free. Just go in the back and ask for that, and they'll give you one of these assessments, and they're outstanding. Uh, we are going to start this whole series with the idea of what does it look like to be transformed spiritually, okay? And we're going to read a scripture together what, that we read last week, Romans 12, 2. So I'd like you all to stand up. And then we're going to read this together. Okay, here we go. Ready? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you now, and that's what we cry out, that you will transform us from the inside out, that you really are concerned with our spiritual health, and so, Lord, I just pray that every word that I share today will draw people closer to you. And it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. All right, everybody, you can be seated. Part of transformation in Christ, I talked a little about this last week, is that if we're going to grow spiritually, it's how we can exchange bad habits for good habits. Because I think we all agree we all know 
about bad habits that can creep into our life. So I thought it's important. We're going to talk a lot about habits today. First of all, what is a habit? Well, a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially ones that have given us, uh, that we've given up on. So bad habits, good habits are very much a part of life. Now, let me give you some bad news and then some good news about habits. Uh, back in 1960, great year, that's the year I was born, in 1960, uh, Dr. Martz wrote a book, Dr. Martz wrote a book called Psycho-Cybernetics. Anybody read that? Great read. Okay, so, uh, but here's what's amazing. That book sold 30 million copies in 1960. Why in the world would a book sell 30 million with a title like that? Well, here's why. Dr. Martz uh, did a lot of reconstructive surgery. And so he would uh, estimate that when somebody had total reconstructive surgery, let's say they had a nose job, that it would take about three weeks for them to actually get used to their new look. And so he began looking back over his life, and he thought, you know what? When I look at my life, anytime I've made adjustments and developed a good or a bad habit, it takes 21 days. Did you ever hear that? 21 days. And so from that, he wrote a book saying, you can change your life, basically, in 21 days. Think of how many times you've heard somebody say, if you can just do that for 21 days, it becomes a habit. How many of you ever heard that? Raise your hand. Has that worked? Anyone? Now, maybe you can get over something in 21 days. Uh, I have found not so much. They've done some deeper dives. And now here's the good news. Research now says 21 days not to have an overhaul, but they said in about 66 days, you actually can make a significant change in your life if you are consistent. Now, we all know what it's like to be consistently caught up in bad habits. As a matter of fact, I read about a few I want to share with you. They're, they're heartbreaking, but here's a few uh, bad habits that I found. Uh, this is one a woman shared. She said, I have two bad habits. One, I don't finish my sentences. Okay, there, I thought that was pretty good. Okay, here. <laughs> this is another one. Says, uh, uh, this is, could be everybody's motto here uh, this morning. I was going to quit all my bad habits uh, for the new year, but then I remembered nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Now, this is a, a woman talking to her best friend. She goes, a woman was talking to her best friend, and the friend said, I have a bad habit for overthinking the joy out of everything. Everybody meet anyone like that? They can think the joy out of anything. In this room are a lot of bad habits. Amen? And there's a lot of good habits. So what I want to talk about this morning is just how spiritually can we develop good habits. And I believe that we can all develop good habits. William Buffett said this about not having control of our habits. Chains are light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. And bad habits can be like chains that over time almost get to the point that they can't be broken. I can tell you in ministry, uh, one of the most heart-wrenching things is to meet with men and women that are battling addictions. And they'll tell you, you know, the crazy thing is, I thought it was just a bad habit that got so bad it nearly ruined my life. So I think it's important that we study God's Word about the power of developing good habits. Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. So what can we do? Well, let's look at three healthy habits. Here's the first healthy habit for spiritual transformation. Love the Lord supremely. Love the Lord supremely. In Mark 12, verses 29 and 30, Jesus answers the question the Pharisees love to ask. And here was the question. Uh, it's, a, it's the goat question. What's the greatest of all time? Jesus, what's the greatest commandment of all time? And Jesus answers that question. He says, uh, the most important one he answered is this. He said, hear, O Israel... The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord our God with all your what? Heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. 
Now, here's why that was such an interesting response to that question. There's a couple of reasons. Here's the first one. Jesus answers them with the answer that has been around for hundreds of years. This is nothing new. Moses in Deuteronomy 6 said the exact same thing, almost. Because then Jesus actually added a couple things that at first don't seem like a big deal. Trust me, the Pharisees caught it. Here's the first thing. When you read Deuteronomy 6, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Jesus mentions your mind. He says, you have to give God your mind. And then we all know what Jesus added after that command. That was the game changer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Because now the Pharisees ask, well, then who's my neighbor? And Jesus spent the rest of his life demonstrating everyone. The untouchables, they're our neighbors. The tax collectors, they're our neighbors. Gentiles, our neighbors, men, women, children, everyone, they're your neighbors. You love everyone. So I went into this year, and I don't make a lot of resolutions, but I do set goals. And uh, over the month of December, as I was setting goals, <clears throat> I don't know why, but God kept saying, before you set 73 goals for this next year, I want you to focus on this one command and then ask this question. So here was the command. I love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And here was the question. How do I do that every day? So I'm going to challenge you with that question. How could you possibly do this every day? And can you measure that? I mean, is there any way you could say, I fed my soul today? Or my mind is getting stronger by what I have done today. Or I'm, I'm getting stronger physically because of what I've done today. Because I don't want to give God half. I want to give God what? All. Now, in your life, what would that look like? Well, the first place I started is I thought, you know what? I should probably do a deeper study on what he meant. Like, what is the biblical meaning of those words? Heart, soul, mind. What does that mean biblically? Well, heart, when the Bible talks about the heart, it's the center of the will. It's our feelings. It's our priorities. They matter. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart. Do you love Jesus? That's what you need to start with every morning. Lord, do I really love you? Matter of fact, in Revelation 2.4, he issues these warnings against churches. And do you remember the warning to the church of Ephesus? You have lost your first, what? Love. Now, how do you know when you're in love? Anybody have teenagers? Raise your hand. Good. Isn't that great? Huh. Do you remember that question? Hey, mom and dad, how do you know when it's love? And what's your answer? You just, no. yeah, why? Yeah, most parents, you don't mean that person you're dating, right? I mean, no. But what do we usually respond is you just know. Isn't that true? You just know. Uh, my son uh, is in love right now. And so it's interesting. My wife and I, we've, we've had this conversation. And every once in a while, he'll do something really kind of irrational. And Maria will go, why did he do that? I'm like, he's in love. Don't you do stupid things? Can I have an amen? amen. Jesus wants to know, do you love me? I mean, seriously, it starts with the heart. Do we, do we love Jesus? And then our soul, when the Bible talks about soul, in Hebrew, it literally means the breath of God. Hebrews 11.30 says, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. Whoever, I love this, captures the soul is wise. Isn't that beautiful? He said, I, I want more than just your emotions. I want your soul. So when I thought about that word soul, there's a, a great book. It's called Soul Print by Mark Batterson. And he said that there is a, a strategy, uh, and it's called Jahari's Windows. And Jahari's Windows basically says, in your life, there are these, for lack of a better word, four windows. And these windows kind of define who you are as a person. So here's the first window. The first window are things that you and others know about yourself. Does that make sense? Those are the general things. You meet somebody, it doesn't take that hard to figure out, oh, you're tall, you're short. You're depressed. Whatever that is, there's an immediate response. And that's why we always talk when we meet strangers about what? 
really basic things. Usually we start with the most basic thing, weather. Why? It's pretty obvious. If it's raining and you go, it looks like we're going to have rain today. Or if you live in southern Indiana, oh, I guess it's gray today. I mean, that's just part of what it is, okay? Common things. But he said, then there's a second window. Those are the things you know about yourself, but other people don't know. And that's where it starts beginning tough. That's how friendships get deeper, is you begin sharing beyond the surface about here's some things that a lot of people don't know about me. Window three are things that others know about you that you don't know. That is hard. You ever had somebody share something with you like that? Say, are you aware that you do this all the time? And you're like, I do not. And then it hits you. Wow, I didn't know I did that. Uh, I remember I was in Bible college and my buddy, my roommate said, Robertson, do you know that you are always walk around punching people? I said, I do not. He goes, dude, you do it all the time. Not the girls, not the, but the guys, you're always walking. Hey, he said, why don't you quit that? And I'm like, I don't do that. And I remember I went to a buddy. I said, do I punch people? And they're like, really? You just picked up on that. Don't you think that's what? We all have annoying things that people see in us. But here's the flip side. Do you know that God has given you all spiritual gifts? And there are things that people see in you, you don't see in yourself. If you talk to the staff, here's what I love. I can't tell you how many times we'll brainstorm about ministries and we'll say, you know who would be great? And we'll share a name. And somebody will say, I'll talk to them. You can't believe how many times I'll ask somebody, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? And they'll go, I don't think I'd be good at that. I'm like, are you kidding? You would be great at that. There's so many times we don't see what God sees, which is actually the fourth window. The fourth window are the things that you don't know and others know about yourself, God knows. And God opens up these areas of mystery and wonder, and he allows us experiencing him in a deeper level that is beyond description. And those moments, you'll hear people say, that was a God thing, or God showed up. Now, you know I'm addicted to sunrises and sunsets, and so if you missed it this morning, you missed it, because the sunrise was amazing. You know, it's been said that there are times that God shows up, and there's other times God shows off. Well, he was showing off this morning. And I think that there are these times in our life, God shows up, and he says, I want you to experience my presence, so you know I'm God, and that you're loved. So this week, I had one of those moments, and I hope you all had some God moments this week. So it was a typical gloomy gray day and uh, where we live we live on uh, par avenue on county line road outside of spencer and uh, so i can walk two three minutes and i can be on the golf course and um, i can walk the, i love the the cart trail i walk that thing all the time with the dog and stuff one of the only things i don't like about that trail is there's geese all over and they leave their um deposits i didn't say deposits for service so i'm not supposed to say poop. But anyway, anyway, I, they leave their deposit. And I'm like, oh, these things are disgusting, you know. And the dog chases them. Oh, it's just, it's fun. So anyway, uh, I was out walking, and I mean, these geese came over, and I went, I don't even know what it was. It's just, I'm like, man, they really are majestic. In fact, if you, if you follow them, they have that arrow, and there's one real long line, and there's always a shorter line. Do you know why that is? Anybody? because there's more geese on that long line. <laughs> it's about as deep as I get. Somebody gave me that. I didn't steal. I stole that some. But I, I really did. I just sat there. And I'm like, God, you're amazing. Like, this is amazing. And I hope you felt amazing this week. I hope you felt the presence of God, because he's trying to bring his light through those windows and say, you know what? I'm with you. I'm alive and well. And that allows us to not only feel the heart of God, but the very soul of God and then the mind. We just read in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that transformation comes from the renewing of our mind. Greg Rochelle puts it this way. Our life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Think about that. Our minds are so important. Our thoughts 
allow us to move good or bad in a certain direction. We have to focus on the right things. Here's our tendency with our minds. We can begin to focus on our problems and then we will draw out the worst case scenario. And you know what that's called? Worry. Do you know what I mean by worst case scenario? It's whatever situation you're facing right now and your mind's gonna play it out. And if you're not careful, it's gonna play it out to the worst case scenario. A couple years ago, uh, when I was diagnosed uh, with cancer, um, I'll just be brutally honest, I jumped to the worst case scenario there for a while. Don't we all, when you hear cancer? And the, the worst case scenario was, Marie, where's the life insurance? Or what would happen if I'm not around? Or a phone call from my son, and he's mad at me. He said, why would you go to church? You need to take care of yourself. And, and I remember how heartbreaking it was when I got off the phone. And I thought, how many of the people that I love and the people that I love now are going through this right now? You're in a situation right now that it's so hard not to worry. That's what our thoughts can be. Or, instead of worry, we can focus on our creator. And that worry actually becomes worship. Say, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know this. Bill Bissy shared it. I know Jesus loves me. I know you love me. And I know you're in control, and I'm not. And when we begin to allow our thoughts to do that, it draws us in the very presence of the Lord. Love God with your heart, mind, soul, your mind, and your strength. We're going to talk a lot about our strength and our physical bodies next week. So let me talk about the second habit. The second habit of transformation spiritually is to serve others unselfishly. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now I want you to think about Jesus Christ, God's Son, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the Lion of Judah, came to earth to do what? Serve us. Think about that. To serve us. When it says ransom, a ransom is something paid for the freedom of others. So when Jesus shares that commandment, love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, the second part of that was what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Serve others. So one of the things I've heard over the years, which I love, is how important it is to be a part of random acts of kindness. So there's an amazing story, and I encourage you to do some more research on this. Uh, Nate May gave me this. We were talking about it uh, this week. And uh, there's a YouTube star, and his name is Jimmy Donaldson, uh, also known as Mr. Beast. If you don't know who Mr. Beast is, check this guy out. So Mr. Beast... Um, started out when he was very young, and his thing was to get sponsors to give him money, and then he would give it away. And he started with a $10,000 sponsor, and then it started getting crazy, to the point now he's worth about $75 million with all the sponsorships. And he keeps turning it back over, and what he loves to do is outrageous challenges and giveaways. So here's one, for example. He will go into like convenience stores and different places with a big check with $100,000 on it and a briefcase full of $100,000. He'll say, would you quit your job for $100,000? And he'll open up the briefcase. So I asked the first service, raise your hand if you'd quit for $100,000. Don't raise your hand. Boy, a lot of you got them up quick. So, but think about that if you were on the spot saying, I'll give you $100,000 cash if you walk away from your job. Another one's called the Circle of Good. He went into uh, Best Buy, and he also went to a food pantry. He draws a big circle, and over the next, he'd say, say, five minutes. Whatever you can fill that circle with, you get. And he just loves to see people's reactions. The one was, well, one of my favorite is, he drove through a drive through The goal was a 1,000 times in one day. Of course, you know you can't do that in one day. So how in the world can you get a 1,000 people to go through a drive through you let everybody else go through and get a free meal. Hey, I can never make this goal go on through. Now, if you're like me, and I know none of you are, but let's say some of you are, you'd be like, I could be generous if I had multi-million dollars. I could do that, right? Guess what? 
you can help other people without having a dime in your pocket. All of us can be a part of random acts of kindness. All of us. Matter of fact, a lot of people's lives would be ruined if they were given millions and millions of dollars. And I also say, oh, if I had millions and millions, I know I would give it all away. Really. I'd have to wrestle with that, wouldn't you? But what can we do? And think of it as a church. What can we do every day to practice random acts of kindness? So let me give you an example of a random act of kindness. Uh, her name is uh, Shakira Autry, and she's now called the Buffalo Angel, and here's why. On Christmas Eve, her and her boyfriend uh, were home, and if you remember, Buffalo got completely nailed with this blizzard. Terrible blizzard came through, life-threatening blizzard. And so she heard some moaning outside of her house, and she looked out, and there was an elderly gentleman, and she came to find out that he was physically and mentally uh, disabled. And he was moaning because he had frostbite on his hands. And he had walked away from his home, and he was completely lost. He didn't know where he was. She takes him in her arms. She takes him inside. Her and her boyfriend get, boyfriend get out a hairdryer, and they're blowing him dry. She wraps him up in a blanket. She lays him down. She gets him hot chocolate. She just starts taking care of him, and she hears he doesn't know where he's at. She goes, no problem. You're going to stay here. He said, but it's Christmas. And she goes, yeah, and you're going to spend Christmas with us. And I'm going to take care of you. And I will find a way to get you to the hospital. And she posted it on Facebook. And finally, somebody was able to get there. And she went with them to the hospital. And she says, I'm with you. I'm going to be with you because you're going to come through this thing. He comes out of surgery. And she said, now, you're now part of the family. You're now Uncle Joe, and you're going to spend Christmas with us all the time. Now, I'm so thankful that God raises up men and women and children that realize we have opportunities to be kind every day of our lives. The third and last habit is this, is to share the good news general, genuinely. If we share the good news of Christ genuinely, it makes all the difference. Listen to these two beautiful verses. Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Romans 10, 15. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I'm so thankful for the beautiful feet of those who brought good news to me. Aren't you? Think of the people in your life that shared the good news of Jesus Christ. Take time to thank them. Uh, this, I think it was on our Christmas service, we passed out thank you cards, and you could write a thank you note to somebody that you were thinking about that helped you come to Christ, or a thank you note to God. And I, I've got a... a, a a guy who invested so much in my life when I was a senior in high school that uh, is battling cancer right now. And I just wrote him a card just to say how deeply, deeply thankful I am for his life. Folks, I am so thankful as you are for those who spread the good news. So guess what? We have the same responsibility. So when I share that, I know people are thinking, I hate it when preachers tell me to share my faith. That's their job. They like that stuff. Okay, first of all, I can tell you as a preacher, I love to share the good news. I just don't like people knowing I'm a preacher. Because I'm telling you, whenever they hear preacher, they usually don't think, keep talking, because I know you're going to share good news. <laughs> you know, that's not their first thought. But you all have such an amazing opportunity, seriously, to start praying for somebody. If you remember a few years ago, Sherwood Oaks did, I think, called One Life is start praying now, who is it in my life that I would love to see come to Jesus? And if you start praying for them on a regular basis, eventually you're going to have a conversation. And are you prepared to just share what Jesus means to you? That's really what the good news is. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. If you remember what Bill Bissey said, Jesus loves you, that's a good place to start. 
Jesus loves you. Because you know how many people, they don't think they're worthy of the love of Jesus. We do and we can share the good news. Every week, one of the things that we do, that when we talk about spiritual transformation, I believe this is one of the things that draws us together, and that's communion. And if you weren't here last week, we were really encouraged by this. We handed out what's called an Ebenezer stone, and we have those available in the back. But an Ebenezer stone, basically, throughout the scripture is, uh, when these stones were used, they were used as memorials, basically crying out for God to help them. And our challenge is that everybody in the church pick up a stone and put that stone somewhere where you're going to see it all the time. And I shared it with you that I put it by my coffee, so I see it every day, and I look up there, and, and there's times you'll just take that stone, you may want to hold it in your hand, and you're always going to pray this prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, I pray that this church will become the church you want it to be here on the west side. We want to be the church God wants us to be. We pray for his help. So I want to encourage you to do that, that we can do that unified as a church. But communion unifies us in another way. And I love what Chris, uh, Dr. Chris Bartley said, that communion is a holy habit. I love that. And here's what he said. If our common humanity means anything, it means communion within the life of God. The banquet of the kingdom, the inheritance that we anticipate in our gratitude today. That is spot on. It is a banquet in which we can be grateful for what God has done for us. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you and we celebrate life today. We all want to grow spiritually. So Lord, help us to realize how important it is to give you every area of our life, our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength, and that we love our neighbors the way that you loved neighbors. Help us to grow to be more like you. And as we break this bread and as we drink this juice, we remember that Jesus loves us and Jesus changes everything. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.
was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught. transformed the only way we can transform is through Jesus Christ and so that is my heart prayer for us that we would be more like Jesus that when we leave here we leave here different but most importantly every day we wake up and we just want to have that prayer that heart Lord make me more like you just like that song earlier said 
you know, I'm going to make room for you today to do whatever you want because I want to be more like you. And even when things maybe don't turn out the way we want them to, I mean, we had other plans in mind. God always knows what's best for you. And sometimes that means, okay, Lord, because I know you want me to be more like you, so I'm going to follow you even if it's not the way that I thought it was going to go. Amen. Let's sing this together. You came to the world you created, trading your crown for a cross. You willingly died, your innocent life paid the cost. Counting your status as nothing, the king of all kings came. Washing my feet, covering me with your love. If more of you means less of me, take
What a great morning it's been together. And that is my prayer for you today as you are leaving that, that um, if, if more of the Lord means less of ourselves, amen to that. I mean, man, may we not be all about ourselves and more about the Lord. Before we get going, I want uh, I have a couple announcements. But one is today at 1230, the Young Adults Group is meeting at Southern Stone at 1230. So, and I'm told the young adults are married or single. Is that correct? Where's the hand? Yes, that's correct. Um, and it's uh, ages-ish is what I was told. 19 to, not 18 to 29. Is, it, is there an age? Oh, higher. We're going higher. So, hey, if you're a young adult, you feel like you're a young adult, you're going to go hang out. They'll tell you if you're too old. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So anyhow, maybe it was maybe the young, the the young, I don't know what the beginning age is, but anyhow, that's happening today. And um, I've asked Carol to come up. She's got uh, just a little reminder for us um, that she wants to share, and she'll pray us out. Good morning. Um, I wanted to remind you that we are um, getting ready to process our giving statements for the year, and um, this is our first time, so please be patient with us. But with that said, I would like to ask you to go and into um, Planning Center or Church Center and make sure your information is correct. If you've moved and you have a new address and that's not been corrected, we really need your new address so we can get those statements to you. So either email or mailing address um, is how you'll receive those. So let's pray, and we'll just get going here. (laughs) Father God, thank you so much for this day, um, for the beautiful, beautiful sunrises we were coming in this morning. Just reminds us that your mercies are new every morning. Please be with our um, people this week as they go about their their daily lives, and we ask them to protect them and to bring them back with us again next Sunday. Thank you for all the blessings that you bring on us, and we just ask these things in our Heavenly Son's name. Thank you so much. Amen. You're dismissed.